we're, we're doing this, and so you guys had told me a couple of things have happened recently. Number one, obviously, everyone knows that the show that everyone talks about is The Last of Us show, correct? Everyone's talking about this show. Last of Us, Last of Us, Last of Us. And every week, you guys say, hey, Phil, did you see The Last of Us? I'm like, no, I don't have HBO Max. We, you know, we, we didn't see it. We don't have the, the thing. We don't get it. You know, we used to get a lot. We used to have Netflix. We used to have uh, Disney Plus. And what was the other one? At one point, we did the trial of Paramount Plus, I want to say. And we had it for like the month, and then we didn't, we didn't renew it. So we've had various different on-demand services uh, over the years. But we don't. all we have right now is Hulu. That's it. Just base Hulu. I think it's $10 a month because we watch various TV shows and things on there. But outside of that, we don't have anything else. Um, so we haven't seen The Last of Us, you know, and everyone's talking about it every every week. And I, I said, you know what? Since we were talking about this too on stream recently, you guys were trying to convince me to get HBO Max, not only to watch The Last of Us, but a lot of you were saying, oh, there's other good stuff. For example, I'm playing Hogwarts Legacy. And you guys are like, yeah, all the Harry Potter movies are on there. You definitely want to get HBO Max because then you could watch the Potter movies. Excuse me. Excuse me again. And after talking to Cass, she's like, yeah, I might be interested in watching the Potter movies if we could get them. So I looked into it, and basically there's two plans for HBO Max. One is $10 a month, but it's full of ads. One is $16 a month, no ads. And I'm just kind of like, so for six extra dollars, you basically value my time, and you won't inundate me with terrible ads that will ruin the viewing experience. I mean, yeah, why wouldn't I get the $16 one, right? Why would I pay 10 and then have a terrible time with ads in my face constantly, right? That just, It doesn't even make sense that the $10... It'd be one thing if it was like, it's a dollar, right? It's one or two dollars, and you, it's with ads, and then the other one's fifteen, sixteen dollars. It's like ten or sixteen. That's not even a big difference to say. Of course, I want the one with no ads. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, we're looking at it, and I'm like, oh wow, look at all the stuff that's on here. Like, wow, all the old shows I used to watch, like all the Warner Brothers stuff. I used to watch the Batman animated series and stuff like that. All the Justice League cartoons from the 90s that I used to watch are on there. Um, my wife's like, oh, look, they have all the old Hanna-Barbera stuff. You know, when she was a kid, she used to watch things like Scooby-Doo, the Jetsons, Fr Flintstones. So she likes those kind of cartoons. Like, this could be nice one night. You sit back, you just watch a few retro cartoons, you know, for nostalgia purposes or whatever. And we're looking on there, and there's a few other... Uh, you know, movies and things on. There's TV shows that might interest us, documentaries or something. We're like, all right, you know what? Why not get it for a month? And if we get it for the month and we like it, we can keep getting it. But there's a high chance we might get it and maybe we'll watch The Last of Us or whatever. And then we're just kind of, man, we won't renew it. But whatever, let's just do it. So we did. So we got it for the month. We got the one month of uh, HBO Max for 16. And we'll see if we want to renew it next month or not. Because honestly, I don't know if we're going to want to. Okay. So I get on there, and I'm like, oh, cool. So let's see what's on here. Let's get Harry Potter. So I type it up. Harry Potter's not on there. <laughs> it's not on there. The, what it has is it has, I guess they did some reunion show, a 20-year reunion show, and then there was some other spinoff show that they did. There is n none of the Harry Potter movies are on there. Some of the Fantastic Beasts movies are on there. But none of the... It's funny, too, because it even says Harry Potter, the collection, years one, two, eight. And when you click on it, it's blank. They have a placeholder page for the movies, and the movies are not on the service. That's bullshit. Like, I thought they were on there because it, when you search online, it claims they're on there. So I pay $16, and none of the fucking movies are there. It actually pisses me off. That's false advertising. Like, they shouldn't list it online like they're there. And then you go to it as a blank page, you know? So what it sounds to me like is that they're they're passing the licensing rights around. But that's just, that's dirty stuff right there, you know? Anyway, for me, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, it was fun because we wanted to maybe watch some of the movies as I'm playing Hogwarts. I guess we can't. Um. So anyway, so what do we end up doing? We ended up watching the first episode of The Last of Us TV show last night. Okay. That was about an hour and 20 minutes. That's basically what we did, and then we went to sleep. Um, Yeah, so we watched it, and I'll give you... And I'm not going to go into massive detail about this. All right? But I'll tell you what I thought. I think some of the things are actually done quite well. I think other things are actually not that good. Um, 
it's it's interesting to see the the distinct changes. There's tons of changes from the game to the show. Um, it's tons. Like I was shocked they changed so much because a lot of people told me that it was very close to the game, and I kind of disagree. I would say uh, the intro segment where they're driving around when everything's going to hell is very similar to the game, and maybe the the uh, just opening kind of segment where it shows twenty years later, and that's about it. Like almost the entire episode was different from the game. You know, they first of all they make these changes that are very odd that don't seem to affect anything, and you gotta wonder why they made them. Like, for example, first of all, Joel has no southern accent. He has one in the game, but he has, like, no accent at all. It's, a little, it's kind of jarring, actually. It's a little weird, because he definitely has that, you know, kind of this this, this, this style of accent, and it's removed completely. His daughter is now biracial, which is not a big deal. But why did they do it? In the game, his daughter is white, like him, right? And in the, in the show, she's biracial. I don't care that she's biracial. It literally affects nothing. But it's an interesting choice. Like, what was the point of that, to change that? I don't know. I really have no idea. It didn't have any bearing on the story. Um, the infected now seem to act like zombies, like typical movie zombies, which they don't in the sh in the game. In the game, when you get overwhelmed by the cordyceps fungus, you basically become a killer. Like, you become a vicious killer. You want to kill all the living things around you and infect them with the fungus. In this show now, you're turning into, like, a zombie, and you're just chasing people trying to, to kill them and eat them, which is not what the, the game was. Um, everyone's talked about the difference of how the fungus comes out of the mouths of the infected. It's really creepy. I agree there. That's kind of weird and creepy. Um, what other changes? Oh, the, like literally the whole plot at the beginning of the game is different now from the show. In the show, well, in the game, if you remember, it's Joel and Tess are going around doing their thing and they're hunting down this guy that basically stole a car battery from them. And the whole first part of the game is combat where you're killing all these people, getting to this guy. You get to the guy and you get the car battery back or whatever and then you, uh, Tess murders him in cold blood as revenge for him stealing and then this gets them wrapped up with the fireflies. In the show, it's completely different. And the show Tess has been captured by the guy who stole the battery, and she's been beaten up by him. And then it's weird because it's like, it's just, it's like they change things literally for no real purpose. Like, if they just went with the plot of the show, or the plot of the game on the show, it would have been kind of the same effect. So it's weird to see the narrative changes they made, because the narrative changes didn't really affect anything, in my opinion. It's not like, oh, it runs better, it flows better because of these changes. I disagree. If anything, what happened is, what you see is they're adapting a video game to a show, so literally all gameplay is not there, and so what happens is it's fast moving. You know, within an hour and 20 minutes, you end up seeing how the infection started. You end up seeing, which, which, by the way, is also totally different. And on the show, it starts in 2003 rather than, what was it, like 2012 or whatever in the game. I can't exactly remember the date in the game, but it starts in 2003. Um, and it's completely different the way it happens. Like this, apparently this cordyceps epidemic happens worldwide, simultaneously, all at once, including everywhere. Like there's planes crashing. It's like, what the hell is that? I can understand if, okay, the cordyceps thing is spreading like wildfire across the ground. How the hell did it hit every plane at once? Huh? <laughs> every plane? They're all crashing at once. Huh, what? So is there an entire cloud of fungus in the ozone that every single person breathing air absorbed it at once? And all, you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't even make sense. Some of it's just weird changes um, that don't make sense. But anyway, what I said, most of the narrative changes either don't make sense or, or I don't understand why they did them. One of the things I don't like, okay, I've only seen the first episode. So if you, if you play The Last of Us game, there's this relationship between Ellie and the leader of the Fireflies, Marlene. Apparently, Marlene is almost like a friend or even like a mentor figure to Ellie. She's the one who taught Ellie how to be a survivalist character. And when you meet Ellie, she acts like an adult. She swears like an adult, but she also has survivalist tendencies. There's even like moments in the Last of Us 1 game where she doesn't understand why other kids who before the infection acted like kids because she's never acted like a kid. She grew up in an infection world, you see? So she's never had time to be frivolous and play uh, and understand like, you know, teen angst or drama or romance or anything like that. She doesn't get it. She reads a diary. And in the diary, she's reading all the dramatic musings of a teenage girl. She's like, is this how girls were before? Like, this is ridiculous. I would never act like this. In the episode one of the show, they rewrite that whole thing. So Marlene and her don't even know each other. She's, she's a prisoner. She's chained up by the Fireflies, which makes no sense why they did it like that. So she doesn't trust the Fireflies or like them, okay? Marlene befriends her within, like, two seconds, which makes no sense. <laughs> you're chained up. You're in prison. Oh, now I'm going to befriend you. I don't know where. It makes no sense. Um... And Ellie, I hate to say it, is an idiot. Like the thing she, the way she acts, like, oh, I've never been outside the walls, okay, of this town. We've always been, I've always lived in the confines of the town. I would love to finally be outside the walls and see real nature. So it just so happens later on in the episode, Joel and Tess are taking Ellie to the outside of the town. And they, they do get out there. But what happens is, it's, it's, you know, there's patrols out there, it's very dangerous. And immediately as they get outside, there's light, floodlights coming down. You can tell the people are out there patrolling for infected to kill them. The first thing Ellie does, she jumps up, wow, this is the outside. I've never been here before. This is amazing. And Tess grabs her. She's like, Jesus, shut up. What the fuck's your problem? I'm like, this is literally the opposite of how she acts in the game. In the game, she's a survivalist. She's already been trained how to survive, and she knows she has to be quiet. She knows the things she has to do to stay alive. In this, it's like she's a dunce. <laughs> you know? So, that's what I mean. Like, there's some things in the show that I really like. I would actually say the entire intro segment 
is very impactful. The whole intro segment of how the cordyceps spreads, how the literally humankind within a matter of hours is overrun and destroyed. It's very scary. It's very impactful. It's very well shot. Very well acted. And then when you get to the meat of the show, you realize the game is better, right? I'll be honest. Like, at least this is just episode one. I haven't seen any other episodes yet. But I'm watching, I'm like, wow. Like, the game was way better with the way that it did stuff. The characters are more believable. And the thing is, you can argue, well, well, it has to be different. I agree with you there, but well, all you need to do was cut out the gameplay elements. Like, you don't need to have an entire half an hour segment where they're sneaking and killing 400 people to get to the guy who stole the car battery. They could just find a way to sneak in and get to the guy who stole the car, bat car battery and just go from there. You know what I'm saying? Um, basically, I'm just kind of like, man, I, I thought some things about the show were good and some were not so good. I was kind of like 50-50 on episode one, which is weird because so many people seem to be so in love with episode one. Oh my god, this is the best show ever made. This has stopped the whole stigma that video games cannot be good shows and movies, and this is the best thing ever. And I'm watching, I'm like, it's alright. I would say that the intro is exciting, and the one that gets to the post-apocalyptic stuff, it actually slows down, doesn't, it's not that good anymore. It kind of gets boring. Honestly, I was getting bored. Now, here's the thing, though. I should, by the way, the chopper outside, what that noise is. I should give full disclosure. I played the game when it was new. I played the game a year later when it came out for PS4, and I've seen people play the game again recently with The Last of Us Part 1. So essentially, I've seen the plot of Last of Us 1 three times. If I didn't know what the plot of The Last of Us was, and it was my first time watching this show, maybe then I would like it more. You know, if you already know kind of everything that's going to happen, it kind of, I don't know, not ruins it, but, you know, like, for example, if I didn't know how the cordyceps worked, right? And I didn't know how things were going to change in 20 years. If I didn't know that Ellie was immune to the bites or whatever, to the, to the cordyceps, then maybe I'd be like, oh, this is amazing, groundbreaking television. But I played the game, so I kind of know it all. And quite frankly, I actually feel like the, the narrative of the game is better. You know what this feels like to me? And this is funny. Because I, I actually know a little bit more perspective than maybe you guys do. This feels to me like, so the game was written by a group of people. And they wrote this amazing masterclass plot. Okay? And then now here we are many years later, a decade later. Oh, we need to adapt this to be a TV show. But we need to make it so that those who wrote the game can't accuse us of just stealing all the stuff that they wrote a decade ago. We have to change it to be a little different. So that way we can say it's our own plot. And we can cr take credit for it. Do you know that's exactly what this is? One million percent. Are you aware that one of the original writers of The Last of Us that no longer works for Naughty Dog came out on social media when episode one released and said, I am completely disgusted because most of the plot elements in here that are good, I wrote. And Neil Druckmann has taken credit for them because you notice his name a million times in the credits, but he didn't give any credit to any of the other writers who wrote The Last of Us one in the show. He acts like he came up with the whole fucking show. And it's his idea. It's like, it wasn't. He was a, one of the writers in the original game. And now because he's the one behind the show, he's taking credit for all of our work. And we didn't even get a call out. Nothing. He's like, this is ridiculous. Now, they weren't, the thing is, they weren't looking to get paid. It would have just been like, hey, can we get a shout out in the credits to say that we wrote some of this? No, they got no credit at all. You'll act like they don't even exist. Okay. Basically, my wife and I will likely continue to watch the show. We have four more four more episodes to go. And then I guess the new episodes come out every Sunday. Um, so we'll probably continue to watch and try to get caught up now. Um, but I don't know how I should tell. Like some people have already said, oh, Phil, you have to get HBO Max because then you could do React content based on... You know, this new stuff. Um, like, what kind of content would I realistically do? What I just did? Like, I just talked for, what, 10 minutes about the show? Is that what you want every week? Me to analyze the episode for 10 minutes in a video on DSP React? Um, I don't know. I guess you guys tell me. Alright? What you want. Is that what you want? Every time a new episode comes out, I do, like, a React video on DSP reacts about it, a short one, because I could do this like 10 minutes of talking, it's no big deal, I could easily do that and just throw it out, throw it up over there, um, but what else, you know, what else is on there, maybe I could do, I don't know, because I don't know what other content is on there, I guess I'd have to look, um, I don't know, 